Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, uh, those of you who are willing to serve our country yet again in, uh, in our service uh, overseas. Um, this is a critical time in the world's history. Uh, I, I met with uh, uh, leaders from an international body yesterday, and they said, in some respects, this is uh, unprecedented. We have war. At the same time, we have uh, famine. At the same time, we have a pandemic, all three uh, hitting the world at the same time. And, and you will each represent our interests uh, in parts of the world that are critical to uh, uh, promoting America's interests around the world. Th there are some who think we should simply forget the world and just uh, return home and only think about what's happening here. I happen to believe that if we're truly interested in America's interests first, that means we need to be extensively involved in the world, uh, making sure that the cause of freedom persists such that we can enjoy the economic vitality and peace that has been associated with, in large measure, with the last 70 years. And, and I want to thank each of you for your willingness and that of your families to uh, be willing to serve uh, yet again. You've been nominated to serve in countries that are obviously very important allies to the U.S., and those partnership partnerships are going to become more important in the years ahead. The uh, Honorable uh, Ambassador Caroline Kennedy uh, will be going to Australia, and as she knows, Australia is our steadfast partner uh, and among our most important allies historically and today. Our partnership will remain critical in maintaining a free and open Indo-Pacific. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, Ambassador Kennedy, that you're going to be able to work with our friends in Australia to identify new opportunities for bilateral and multilateral cooperation and to strengthen the uh, already uh, strong quads relationship which we have. Uh, the Honorable Philip S. Goldberg, uh, South Korea, as you know, is our most important ally in dealing with the ongoing threat of uh, North Korea. And we need to work together to deter North Korea's aggression to push the Democratic People's Republic of Korea to abandon its nuclear weapons program, to stop its belligerent actions, and to cease its Ill illegal activity. Uh, of course, our partnership goes beyond this uh, uh, single common threat. I hope you'll also approach your time as ambassador uh, to uh, recommit to our partnership and to find new ways to uh, advance the, um, uh, the interests which we have uh, among freedom-loving countries and nations that follow the rule of law, to, to uh, encourage China to begin to abide by uh, those, uh, those common rules. Uh, Ms. Mary, Car Mary K. Loss Carlson, if confirmed, you'll be stepping into a vital role uh, and will be tasked with uh, uh, perhaps rebuilding and strengthening our uh, relationship with the Philippines. As the chairman has just indicated, our relationship with the Philippines has been strained with the current president uh, uh, expressing uh, points of view which are uh, antithetical to those that many of us hold. Um, we're happy to see that the Visiting Forces Agreement was restored last year. We clearly have a good relationship with those who have the long-term interest of our uh, of the region in, in, in their sites. Uh, I hope that you'll be able to work with our friends in the Philippines to find a much better path forward uh, with regards to our common interest in human rights. Uh, Mr. Mark Nathanson, uh, I don't have to tell you that NATO uh, is pleased to have Norway as an uh, important ally. Uh, its geopolitical significance will only become more important as Russia and China attempt to change the rules of the road, particularly as they relate to the, the, uh, uh, their presence in the Arctic. Uh, I hope you'll use your time as ambassador to strengthen our cooperation with Norway, uh, especially on those Arctic issues. Uh, and additionally, I hope you'll be able to work with our Nor Norwegian allies to develop a common or complementary responses when faced with threats from, from Russia and China. So to all, all of you, I appreciate your willingness to serve. It is uh, uh, a real commitment, and I, I hope the American people recognize that on the part of you and your families to go serve our country in a foreign place uh, with so much happening in the world, represents a sacrifice in your part and is one which I personally and I think all members of our committee deeply appreciate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Carlson, um, I think a number of us have been uh, surprised uh, and a little disoriented by the uh, comments made by the current president of the Philippines, uh, the apparent distance he uh, has with uh, the cause of freedom and his uh, closeness to, to China. 
Um, uh, obviously, our nation has uh, worked with the uh, people of the Philippines to uh, provide for safety and security of that nation and, and his, his uh, redirection uh, ha has been uh, hard to understand. C can you give me a sense as, from your perspective as to what it is that may have led him to make the uh, uh, departure from our historic relationship uh, that he has? Uh, and, uh, and, and to what extent you believe that's being uh, um, welcomed by the people of the Philippines? Thank you for that question. I, I think it's important to uh, look at the U.S.-Philippine relationship in its entirety. We are friends, partners, allies with a 75-year history of diplomacy. We're celebrating thriving at 75 uh, just this year. So with regard to any particular individual, uh, I, I think the more important thing is to look ahead. We have a strong foundation of shared values with the people of the Philippines. We train with their military very closely, hundreds of uh, training exercises every year, including the Balakatan uh, premier exercise, which means shoulder to shoulder, which is just finishing up today in the Philippines, where our um, colleagues across all sectors of society work together, including for uh, freedom of expression and countering uh, Chinese aggression. So I think as we look forward to the next 75 years, there's a lot of room for optimism based on the strong foundations of democracy that exist in the Philippines. Thank you. Uh, Ambassador Kennedy, um, uh, I think we've been very impressed with the backbone that's been shown by the people of Australia. Uh, they banned uh, Huawei products. They uh, have probed the origins of COVID. They uh, participated in a uh, diplomatic boycott of the, uh, uh, of the Olympics as a result of what was being perpetrated against the Uyghur people. Um, uh, in this setting, they're obviously a very small, uh, in terms of population and economy, uh, neighbor of, of China. Um, we share interests in getting China to, to, to behave in a more uh, uh, normal and rules-based way. Uh, what, what is your perception of, of uh, how Australia might be able to, to uh, uh, lead an effort to really develop a comprehensive strategy to confront China? I think Australia and the United States working together uh, is uh, especially um, in the quad with our uh, India friends and with Japan is a very powerful um, alliance and combination. Um, and I think that the Australian um, people have now uh, come together in understanding um, the challenges posed by China. So I think that we have an opportunity through our partnerships and alliances working multilaterally throughout the region uh, to really uh, create a comprehensive strategy that will strengthen um, deterrence and uh, increase our own security, as well as allowing for the continued prosperity of the region. I think the rules-based order that America has um, stood behind has working with Australia has really allowed millions to prosper and provide a great opportunity for Americans. I think that um, together with Australia, we will continue to deliver on that. I would note that China has a very comprehensive and to date pretty successful strategy uh, to expand their influence in the world, to develop the strongest military in the world, to become the strongest economy in the world. Uh, and I'm concerned that we as a nation and, uh, and even members of the Quad have not settled on what our strategy is uh, to deal with China. Uh, do you agree that China is behaving in a malevolent and predatory way that represents a real threat uh, to, uh, to our interests uh, here and around the world? I think the strongest thing that we have is, uh, is our values and our, uh, the sense I saw when I was in Japan, how the whole world really still looks to America as the place they want to come to, the place that, uh, that inspires them. So I, I feel confident that we do have uh, in our values, in our economic strength, in our uh, security partnerships, our alliances, our multilateral work, 
um, that we do have a winning strategy. And I know that Australia and the United States together uh, work side by side to implement that every day. So I'm confident uh, in the United States and in our ability to uh, maintain a free and open and secure and prosperous Indo-Pacific.